So the product that you talk about, uh, I assume hemp and, and things like that, can that be grown commercially here? Can we? Can not we... yet. Uh, hemp with the Farm Bill this past February allowed uh, industrial hemp to be planted or grown again in the United States for the first time in, I don't remember how many years, 50 years, something like that. But still for under research basis only. Okay. Uh, they have grown some in Colorado, and if they plan to use it for a certain you know, medicine aspects, they can only sell it within Colorado. It's still a lot of like rules and stipulations, but it's coming. And you know, I think people are realizing that hemp has a long-standing history in this country. Yeah. You know, the first, second drafts, the first drafts of the Declaration of Independence mm -hmm. was on hemp, and you know, even the sails that got the boats here in the first place were made out of hemp. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know, in the, in the World War II age, the government actually demanded and was requiring people to grow hemp. Mm -hmm. You know, our founding fathers grew hemp. I think when people now with social media and with the technology and the science that's out there, they're, they're, they're looking past that uh, media propaganda that was put out there in the early 30s that told us that it was all bad for us and it was going to cause more crime. And in fact, now, whether it be marijuana or any of the cannabinoids, they're seeing that as this becomes more widely available, that crime is going down, teen use is going down, opioid and other drug overdoses are going down, and revenues are going up. That's just on the medical side. When we look at hemp, you have the textiles, the biofuels, the hemp plastics. You have a lot of you know, um, co commodity that value there, and the economy can really benefit. And I think that's what's changing the game, both on the science being there to prove it, as well as people needing a new economical boost in this country. If there is such a benefit, why is it taking so long for it to be reintroduced, why, you know, to grow? And if there's such a distinction still between the marijuana and the, the other products that, that you can grow that aren't going to get you high? Well, because uh, on one side, there's corporate interests. There's uh, you know, people that don't want it out there. Uh, that's what kind of was starting the, the, the problem back in the 30s. There was industry interests, you know, to be cotton or newspaper or paper or timber. Mm -hmm. They didn't want the competition from a very sustainable plant that can grow just about anywhere uh, with a little water. So that was part of it. The other part is um, you, know, you, you have a system in place that you know, every time you want to change it, it's dramatic, and, and, but people are always, you know, a little skeptic at first when it's new. Like, what I tell people is this is not a new plant that we found, a new herb in the jungle somewhere that never been discovered before. This is very old school stuff being reintroduced. So that's one of the issues. There's a few others, but um, one of the things we do is we just do a lot of education and we get it out there as much as possible. The science, we actually, um, Brazil is a great story. There was a mother in Brazil who got access to our RSHO, our real scientific hemp oil, for her child with seizures, and it worked dramatically, and then she got arrested because it's not allowed in Brazil. Well, since then, the Brazilian government has changed their mind. They've done research on several conditions, not just seizures, but on Parkinson's and mm -hmm. other things. And now they're actually, I think, as of even last week, they passed a law that now the government subsidizes RSHO oil for people in need in Brazil. Some governments actually do and help the people when they need it. And some are looking more at the dollars and, and, and that interest. And I'm not, you know, that's just the way we are as a capitalist society. So it's taking a little bit longer. But I think as more people see the revenue and the opportunities that exist, they can't dismiss the medical aspects. That's out of the box. But when they start seeing the financial aspects of it come to play, I think they're going to become more in tune with it.